Hey guys, it's Ray with Spray Wash Pro. Hope everybody's having a great day. On a big ceramic tile roof, it's actually ceramic and it has some TPO on here. And thought I'd do a little small training video for Spray Wash Pro about what to think about and some things to, to deal with um, on a ceramic tile roof or Mexican tile or, am I allowed to say that now? Does it have to be Hispanic tile? Spanish tile, Mexican tile. Uh, barrel tile type roof. So uh, let me flip it around here and uh, we'll get into the discussion on cleaning barrel tile roofs. All right, this is probably the most common style of barrel tile and I want y'all to look at um, the profile here. So it's kind of like an eyebrow is what it looks like. Uh, you've got a tab over here that goes up and like that. You can see them up there on the uh, second, or is that third floor? Second floor. Uh, in this area, uh, you can see that the profiles, and again, look at the profile here. So one single tile or one single shingle goes here, over here, and this tab that's under here. Um, these are typically grouted or, or uh, masonry into place is what's kicking, keeping them in, not nailed. They are somewhat loose. Um, you know, they, they, they can get loose and I have stepped on them and had them slide out before. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of walking these types of roofs. Uh, they are also prone to breakage. Uh, I saw one broken right there and we're going to document that um it's broken before we ever uh we actually are not climbing this we used a lift and we have this uh tpo roof area here to stand on in the background that actually makes this a really ideal place to to talk about roof so i can be up here showing you because on a typical residential barrel tile roof, I'm really not having time to sit here and talk to a camera because I'm constantly watching my footing, I'm making sure nothing's shifting around, and I'm making sure I'm standing in the right place. And that's what we're going to get into right now. So you can see these things are not extremely thick at all. Um, the safest place, I mean, that's uh, three eighths of an inch, I would say. The safest place to stand on these would be in the valley. Oh, you know, th there's a pretty good gap in here. Somebody my size standing on that would probably snap it. So in the valley where you have a lot of overlap on the shingle so in this area and in this area they're touching along in here so these are the areas where you want to keep your footing at on these now if you're a little skinny guy like uh glenn robertson jeff robertson who's just amazing at tile roofs i mean he can dance across all these things um i do recommend having the thinnest person on your crew walk these now when the algae gets wet and you've got it soaked with your mixture and it starts to die, it's going to get slick, very slick. Like right now with this dry, I can walk across this. Um, morning day would make it a little bit slippery, but right now as this stuff is dry, there's not a problem walking on it. But like on a metal roof, whenever this algae gets bleached and starts to die, it's gonna get slick. It's gonna get real slick right then. The caps are typically a bit different. You see, they don't have the little uh, tab coming out on there. 
they're just shooting up straight up there and you'll have those on the the hip ends and then across the top um, here's an idea of some of the grout that's holding these in it's, it's just a, a concrete product um, they're they're stuck in under that most of the times these tiles will actually have an underlayment on it so the, the tiles aren't necessarily keeping the waterproofing out there's either a membrane uh, I've seen it with metal I've also seen it like right here what did I notice right here is some roll roofing that's stuck there so that's probably the underlayment um that's that's under this barrel tile i'm not a big fan of walking them uh spray them from a ladder whenever i can uh, this large building and I'll, I'll have some photos of it um it really made sense to get a lift uh for most of it and then spray part of it from here on the tpo roofs uh let's see next part Remember, there's multiple sides to every tile, and that can be best, you know, described by looking at it from this angle. So, as I'm spraying along in here, these look pretty darn good, right? These shingles in here, boy, they're nice and clean. But you get on this side, and they're still filthy. So, what's happened is I was spraying here, my mixture is just skeeting across the top of these uh just skeeting right across the top so whenever you're dealing with a, a barrel tile you've really got four sides that you're going to have to hit four distinct spray areas this side the top this side and the face and the face of it so left side top right side and the face all of those areas are going to need to get sprayed um you know if you were to walk away from here and say man this looks just awesome and then the customer comes out and sees it from this side and they're gonna be like yeah uh you're not very good at what you do uh this is what we started out with on this roof uh just pure black um this roof has been I believe about seven years since it's been cleaned. I know because I'm the last guy that cleaned it. All right, mix ratios, you need a hot mix, unfortunately. You really need a hot mix on these roofs. I'm spraying this one at a 50% of a 12.5 SH on here. Uh, going hot now this is let me swap over so you can see you can see even on this 50 percent i've still got some void areas and some touch-ups that i'll have to come back and do and really even as i'm spraying and i'm pretty much putting down two coats of the 50% while I'm spraying and I go and hit it and then hit the other side uh, so it's really getting you know two coats while we're spraying the the two coats hits the left top right front uh, so then I'll come back and do my touch-up spot so you can plan on three to four coats on on a roof like this when it's that bad um, this particular roof we're actually using uh, about 900 gallons of bleach if you can believe that but again I'll, I'll post the you can see the full pictures of it here uh, also have some drone footage and they want us to inspect the roof and see uh, any broken uh, tiles on here because you're spraying such a strong mix I highly 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 recommend uh, your respirator, uh, your personal property protection. Pro ah. Because you're spraying such a hot mix, I really strongly recommend you wear a respirator on there. Uh, being exposed to this, you know, 50-50 mix, uh, just uh, baking out there and off-gassing is really tough for your lungs. So please, please, as a guy who's been doing this for a long time, 
and my lungs are not what they used to be, wear your respirators whenever you're doing this. Uh, some other ideas, and this isn't meant by any means to be a full class, just kind of a, like I said, a little primer on tile roofs. Uh, it's important also to know what's under the tile or what, what the tile is. This roof is a painted tile roof. So hold on. So right here is the color of this tile, but then it was painted this color. And you can see we're starting to lose some color on here. This building's probably 25 uh, years old or so. Uh, if you were to attack this roof with a surface cleaner, you would certainly lose a lot more of this color, uh, of the gray color, and you this this roof would would probably turn about 50% uh, terracotta color. The actual manufacture of the tile. Another problem with that. So keep your surface cleaners away from roofs like this. Keep pressure away from roofs like this. Another important thing to think about uh, on, on these types of roofs, uh, again, the coating will come off very easily. But the other thing is that um, many times they'll have spares, but this exact profile that would fit in here, shoop, it's not like a three tab or an arc architectural grade shingle to where you can put another one in um, may not be the same color and you can fix it but whenever you break these if they don't have spares that original manufacturer may have gone out of business there's not an exact profile that matches that so um, you'll never get another shingle that actually fits in there the right way. So another reason just not to walk them if you can help it. Especially don't walk them if you're as, as heavy as I am. Um, also, you know, you have a big enough, bad enough uh, roof. Um, I know Jeff Robertson has, has, has flown out and helped several people with roofs or driven up and, and helped help them with them. Um, such a great, great resource to have. Uh, reach out to him really really knows his stuff on here here's one that uh, we shot this from from this way so you can start to see when I get over on this side I'm gonna have a lot of, of misses over on the left hand sides of these shingles so I'm gonna have to come back uh, put a ladder up down there <coughs> excuse me and shoot back to the right to get all of those areas you know uh, we we're just talking earlier in the video about uh, how the grout can come loose. I was just over here messing around and see this tile right here. This grout has detached under here at time. And you can see how it's just cemented into place. That's what's holding it on. And, you know, so this one's loose right here. Um, this one's loose right here. And, you know, finally it, it starts to, to hold again up here. Now these were nailed into the truss, so they may not slide off. There is a small nail hole right in there that's nailing it to this wooden truss that's right there. So it may not, you know, slide completely off on you if you stepped on that. But also if that nail or fastener has rusted through, uh, you could have a catastrophic problem with it it's sliding down. So if you are walking it, really good idea to be harnessed in on these. And I know that sometimes it's a nightmare to try to figure out how to harness on these roofs. Um, it can be tough, but uh, some people actually go as far as, as, as taking a tile up and, and installing a, uh, a truss, uh, um, a D-ring harness up uh, into the roof and then uh, uninstalling it and, and gluing the tile back at the end. I've seen that done before. Hopefully you'll get lucky and actually uh, get uh, a roof that already has tie-off points on it. But um, 
yeah i've actually seen videos on the internet of like whole sections of tile like giving loose and, and a whole section just sliding down um which again if, if you were standing on there it, it would be catastrophic it would probably put your butt on the ground and lots of money in insurance uh, that you're going to be paying because when these things hit the ground they're going to shatter all right something else that's very important to consider whenever you're washing things like that if i heard you know you heard me up there we're doing four coats of a 50 50 on something that dirty please make sure that that you practice really good plant and property protection at that point um, because you're dealing with a mix that that could kill a cactus i mean it, it's you're dealing with a really strong mix and while uh it's all it's going to go somewhere um if you don't have gutters it's going to be dripping onto the hedges uh you're going to get overspray your plants are probably going to get multiple coats of you know of this very strong mix so really important to have a good ground guy um, make that make that um, project look like a thunderstorm has hit uh, before you ever start washing keep it wet while you're washing uh, just water 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 cover with tyvek you know things that uh you need um sorry i'm actually just making sure what time they close so i can get up here and uh finish up so a lot of plant and property protection and you just really want to make sure um you've got that runoff handled and neutralized and uh, the property made safe you know windows you don't want that strong mix drying on the windows out there. So um, a good ground guy is just absolutely essential whenever you're doing projects like this, but they do clean up. They clean up great. And you know, you can make a, a, a good amount of money uh, on there. Uh, this project um, was 5,000. It was uh, a one day project and one day, and then I had to come back and do a couple of little areas uh, that, that for whatever reason, oh, but we ran out of bleach at the shop um, um, that we couldn't handle on, on uh, Saturday. And uh, we were off Mother's Day and literally we were, we were out of bleach. So we knocked off at about four o'clock and said to heck with it. So I got a couple of hours out here. Had we not had those bleach issues, we would have gotten this done in one day. And this project is 5,000. So anyway, hope this helped. Feel free to, to reach out if I can answer any questions for you. Um, I'm available. Doug's available. Thank you for being a member of Spray Wash Pro and wash on.